When creating forms, one common thing we want to ensure is that the fields are properly validated prior to submitting. In Vue, we can easily do this using Vuelidate, a simple lightweight model-based validation library for Vue. Vuelidate is considered model-based because the validation rules are defined next to your data and the validation tree structure matches the structure of your data. In this video, we're going to learn how to set up Vuelidate, validate our fields with common built-in checks, output proper error messages, and also how to write custom validations. Before we get started, if you do enjoy the video, be sure to scroll down and leave a like on this as it really does help out the channel. And if you're new here, be sure to subscribe. Alright, let's jump into the code. Here in VS Code, I have a view project created with a simple form. Within the template of this component, there are four different inputs created using a reusable form input component called base input. I won't be covering how to create this component within the video, but if you want to learn more about these, I created a video which will be linked in the description or in a card that covers how to create this reusable form input component. On the base input components, to define the label for each input, there is a label prop as well as a type prop to determine the type of input. By default, this component defaults to a type of text if not defined. To capture user data, there is a vModel directive on each component synced up to a reactive object with four different properties, one for each of the inputs within the template called form data. Lastly, to submit this form, we have a button with a type of submit. On the form element itself, there is an event listener called submit. When this event is triggered, it'll run a function called submit form. Currently, this function is just set up to alert out to the browser success form submitted. To begin using Vuelidate, we first need to install it into the project. We can do so by opening up the VS Code terminal and running the command npmi at Vuelidate slash core and also Vuelidate slash validators. Inside the app.view component, we can now import Vuelidate from Vuelidate Core. We'll also import a validator from the Vuelidate slash validators. To start, we'll just import the required validator. We'll cover some additional validators later within the video. With that imported, let's define the validation rules. Vuelidate works off the same structure of our reactive data we call form data. So let's create a new variable and name it rules. We'll set this equal to an object and define the same four properties we have within form data. Then we just need to define the rules for each one of the fields. This is done by defining the validator we imported on each property, which for now is just required. As you can see, the rules we define now match the structure of our reactive data form data. Next, we need to initialize Vuelidate within this component. This can be done by creating a new variable, which we'll name v$ and set it equal to a function from Vuelidate called useVuelidate. This takes in two params, the rules we defined and then the state, which would be form data. And that's it, we now have Vuelidate validation set up for our component. However, if we submit the form with empty data, it still submits. So let's fix that. What we need to do next is validate our form data on submission of the form. We can do this using a function available on the variable we define called v$. To understand things more clearly, if we take a look inside of the view dev tools, we can see the v$ variable we define, which is a computed object. If we expand this, you can see we have access to quite a few things. We'll take a look at some of these items later within the video, but as you can see at the very bottom of this object, we have the function called $validate we can run to validate the data. Back in app.view, let's create a new variable called result within the function submit form. We'll set this equal to v $sign.value and then the validate function. We need to define the value here since the variable is a computed value. We're also going to need to add a sync to the start of this function since the validate function is asynchronous and we want to wait for it to finish validating prior to continuing on with the function. Once this resolves, it'll either return true if it passes the validation or false if it does not. For now, let's just create an if else block to check if the form passes validation. If the result is true, well, I'll put the success message. If not, we'll create a new alert and inform the user that the form was not submitted. Let's check this out. Since we specified that all fields are required, if we submit an empty form, we are alerted that the form was not submitted. If we then fill all the fields in, the form will be submitted successfully. Informing users of the error is a standard practice when validating fields. Vuelidate gives us the ability to easily output errors based on each field we are validating. Again, if we head into the view dev tools, we can see this object called required, which is a validator we defined. If we expand this, we can see the message that will be outputted if a field is not completed. We have two different ways we can output the errors, either with grouping or for each individual field. Every error that is captured will be added to the v$ object within a property called $errors. 
For example, within the template, we could loop through the V$ errors, which is an array using a V4 loop. Inside of the span element, we can output the field name with the dollar sign property, and then the error message with dollar sign message. Then if we attempt to submit the form, we'll be shown all the errors that we currently have. If you want to show the individual error messages for each field, we can do this very easily. Within the V$ sign object, we have access to each field. Each of these fields have a very similar structure to the V$ sign object itself. Within the template, we can retrieve the current error for a field by first off creating a span tag, adding a V4 directive looping through the V$ sign.username.$ errors, and then outputting the error with error.$ sign message. Then if we attempt to submit the form again, we can now see we have the specific error message for that field. Let's also add this error outputting for each of the additional three fields. So far, we've only looked at a single validator from this library, which is required. Viewlidate offers over 20 built-in ready-to-use validators. Let's take a look at a few more common ones we might use. For this form, we might want to ensure that a username has a minimum length of 10 characters, an email is actually formatted as an email, and also that the password and confirm password match. Viewlidate has built-in validators to support this. First, we just need to import them in the same place that we did our required validator. We will import min length, email, and also same as. Then we just need to assign the correct validators to our rules property. We'll add the min length validator with a value of 10 to the username, the email validator to the email property, and lastly, the same as with the value of our password to the confirm password property. Now that we want to obtain access to our reactive data within our rules, we need to convert our rules to a computed value. This allows the rules to have access to the current form data within the form. Otherwise, this wouldn't work properly. That's all we have to do. It's as simple as that to add additional validators to the fields. Then you can see if we don't meet the requirements for the fields we set, then we will receive a message informing us now within the form. Although view the date comes with built-in validators, you might want to create a custom validation. Perhaps for the username, we want to ensure the value contains the word user. We can create a new variable called contain user and set it equal to a function with a param of value and return a check using the includes method to check for the value of user. Then we need to set the variable that we define within our rules for the field that we want to add this custom validation to. And that's all we need to do. Our field will now check for this custom validation that we just wrote. Currently, if the field does not pass our custom validation, we don't see an error message displayed. This is because there's not one associated with the validation rule that we created. We can easily create one using the with message helper, which allows you to create a custom error message. You can use this on your custom validations or to override the default error message from Viewlidate. Let's import helpers from Viewlidate, then head down to where we define the custom validation. We need to define a colon after the name of the validator and target helpers.with message. This takes in two arguments, the message you want to output, then as a second argument, the validator. And now we should be able to head to the form and see the message if the validation is not met. Alright, that should be everything you need to know to get started using Viewlidate to validate your fields. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.